If you've played video games at all, then you probably know the tropes. Get enough coins and you get an extra <gasps> life. Yes. Bad guys always leave red barrels around filled with exploded juice, and sometimes your character can jump and then jump again. But is double jumping physically possible? Let's find out. <laughs> A number of classic games feature double jumping, but here's Super Smash Bros. to demonstrate. Double jumping is when a character jumps, and at the apex of their jump, jumps again. They move, and yet they are pushing on nothing but air. How? Many of you have asked me this question over the years, so let's jump right into it. Ha <laughs> ha! Woo! Obviously, in the course of everyday life, you can't double jump. I mean, you can, you can prove this to yourself if you just... Ah! Oh! Oh, it's brick, of course it would hurt. Oh, how does he? Like I said, you can try to, you can try to, you can try to double jump, <laughs> but, but that effort is wasted. That's because of what a jump is. When you jump, your legs apply a force to the ground. And because Newton's laws state that there's an equal and opposite reaction for every action, when your legs provide a force on the ground, the ground provides a force on you. This force accelerates your mass and you jump upwards. So what is a double jump then in these terms? Well, you jump into the air and then once in the air, you press down or attempt to on the air. But the air has so little mass, it can only provide a very small reactionary force. A force so small that it doesn't accelerate your mass enough to give you an extra boost up. Again, you can, Again, you can prove this to yourself. Ah! Yeah. Oh, extra life. Ah! Oh -ho! Another way to prove that the classic form of the double jump isn't really possible is to remove gravity altogether. Destin over at Smarter Every Day actually got to ask astronauts whether or not a cat's aerial writing reflex worked in outer space. And you can see astronaut Tom Marshburn here trying to move his body. He can rotate it, but he can't give it any velocity in any direction. That wouldn't be the case if you could push off the air like a double jump. In fact, if you could push off the air like a double jump, then humans could fly. And obviously, that's not the case. Oh no. While it's theoretically possible to kick air away from you so fast that you get an extra upward boost, I also think that's the least plausible way of doing a double jump. How else could we do it? Ah, how dense are you? Are you full of pasta and fasool? What's fasool? The conservation of momentum is a fundamental law in physics that states that momentum, which is a product of mass and velocity of a system does not change overall unless acted on by an outside force. For example, if I were to, uh, if I were to jump into this block, the momentum that I have before I hit it has to equal my momentum after I hit it, plus the momentum that I give the block. Because, because our masses don't change, Oh, I get slowed down, it gets sped up, and, and then and momentum's conserved. Dude, how, how do you do that? I think that we can use the conservation of momentum to enable a different kind of double jump. Here's a riddle my fantastic eighth grade science teacher, Mr. D, gave me once. If you have a great science teacher, you should tell them. Imagine that you are sat in the middle of a frozen pond, right on the ice. The ice is totally frictionless. How do you get back to shore? I'll, I'll give you a second. <laughs> oh, Charles is gonna love it. <laughs> the solution is to use the conservation of momentum. You're stuck in the middle of the pond and you can't change your velocity because of the lack of friction. So change your mass. If you took off maybe your boot and threw it in one direction, you would lose mass. And because you lose mass, but momentum has to be conserved, you are going to get momentum. But your initial momentum was zero, so now you get momentum that's negative, or just pointing in the opposite direction. Because the ice is frictionless, even that little bit of velocity throwing your boot away from you gave you, you get back to shore. Problem solved. 
What if we solved the double jump problem like we solved the pond problem by throwing your clothes away? <laughs> oh, okay, that's where we're going. It looks like most double jumps start at the apex of the first jump where the initial upwards velocity is finally completely canceled out by gravity. Because a greater change in momentum would come from changing your mass as much as you can, at this point, you'd wanna throw all of your clothes. All of them. <laughs> oh, oh, why did I do it like this? Then if you set up the equation, you can find out how fast you'd have to throw all of your clothes away from your naked body to get an additional upward boost. Woohoo! Time to add some numbers. <laughs> I found a study that says the average person wears around a kilogram of clothes. And if the average person weighs around 62 kilograms and we want a boost at the apex of our jump to be like a normal jump, maybe an upwards velocity of three meters per second, then if, if you jumped, waited to the apex, got naked midair, and then threw all of your clothes down directly below you at 150 meters per second, around 350 miles per hour, you would get a second boost you would double jump. Oh, uh, oh, it, it touched me. So, could you ever double jump? Well, not quite like a classic video game character. If you had to push down on the air with your legs, you'd have to do it so hard and so fast, you'd probably rip your legs off. A much more plausible, though still pretty hard, option would be to jump and at the apex, Get naked and throw your clothes down below you faster than anyone's thrown anything. Impractical, sure, but still possible. Hey, get, get creative with it. Bring a rocket launcher and then fire your clothes down for you. Technically, it would work. And it would be another video game trope that we just confirmed. Because science. <laughs> yeah! Oh, that was a bad one. I'm still in frame by... Thank you so much for watching, George. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at SciFile where you can suggest ideas for future episodes like this one and on Instagram under the same handle where I'm now posting mini episodes. And if you want more silliness, check out my Squatch. And if you want higher quality science stuff, check out the space program. Also with me, thanks. Yes, I know it's, it's physically impossible to both kick air so fast that you double jump and throw clothes at 350 miles an hour, but it is more practical to throw objects and use the conservation of momentum than it is to kick air. Hey, did you know that Yoshi has a full name like a dinosaur? It's Yoshi T. Munchakupas. Oh, Yoshi Soar T. Munchakupas.